This show is produced by the Harwood Podcast Network. Hey there, everybody. I'm here with today's special guest, Gentry Bronson. Welcome to Live from Basics. Tell us about the song, Beautiful Ghost. The song itself comes from, it sounds like a very free song in many ways, because it, it, it became that. But in the beginning, it was really a, uh, 
a, a song that came from feeling really trapped and feeling like a beautiful ghost mm -hmm. kind of wandering through the world and not necessarily feeling anonymous, but wanting to feel anonymous. And I try to write songs, uh, not just internally, but I try to get them out so that people can relate to them, obviously. Right. You know. That song came from a, a very dark time where I literally was a captive in many ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was listening to a lot of uh, um, Peter Gabriel at the time. Mm. In typical fashion for me, I wrote... 50 times as much as what's in the song, you know, having learned my lesson long ago to not do 12 minute songs on stage. And there's a little artistic arrogance there when you try to go that far. You may want to get comfortable, <laughs> get, a, get a beverage or something. But in this case, it, you know, Beautiful Ghost is really, it's, it's, uh, it has a lot to do with, with freedom and not having actually gotten there. Mm -hmm. And then it asks a lot of questions about the state of the world, but also the state of your internal person. Yeah. Right. Tell us where you're from originally. I grew up in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I was almost going to say I grew up in Antarctica. <laughs> but they're almost they're the very same. similar. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, a friend of mine, I just talked to him recently, he called it Hoth mm. for all, you know, you Star Wars fans out there. There's a lot of snow, a lot of, um, a lot of isolation, a lot of, uh, you know, there, you have this, it's a place where, people kind of die internally for about six months. <laughs> and then when spring and summer comes, they actually have this literal rebirth mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. And uh, I, I grew up even a little more isolated. And then I, I was raised on this, this hippie farm out in the country. And uh, uh, one of the things about my childhood was that when the winter came, we had such terrible insulation in this old farmhouse that my... Uh, my dad and I would go out and wrap the entire house in uh, plastic. Mm. And then we would stack uh, three hay bales around the bottom of the wow. house all the way around. Yeah. So um, I would say that where I'm from, it was a turbulent uh, childhood. But, you know, I, I mean, I still love it there. It's still got a, a quality that, that's nostalgic, you know. As you were wrapped in your cocoon of the house back there during the winter, what kind of music were you into? What were you listening to? Um, well, when I was, uh, when I was really little, I remember saying to my mom, uh, you know, mom, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to listen to rock and roll. I'm only going to listen to country, <laughs> which is bizarre because the only country I can remember ever hearing in the house was John Denver. But later on, later on, you know, my, there were a lot of, uh, Beatles and Jimi Hendrix records and, uh. I remember my mom being into like Holly Near, these these kind of strange mm -hmm. folk lesbian artists, <laughs> you know, Sesame Street records too, very very present. And then uh, when I got to be about fourteen, I discovered punk rock and things kind of opened up. It know. went downhill from there. And then, <laughs> the there was no thing. saving you at that point. <laughs> right. Yeah, but I, you know, I was I, I was playing classical piano at the same time when I was a kid. So, uh, but I never really listened to that. It wasn't something that that was there. Yeah. Um, and and now I, I love it. I, I you know I, it I was love that the stuff. classical stuff was probably more like stuff that you did as opposed to stuff that you would listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're about to play the Queen and the Clown. What can you tell us about this tune? The the clown. I mean, there's there's an element of me that that kind of the, the song has these. It alludes to a court jester. It mm -hmm. alludes to royalty. It alludes to you know, and, and and in this, it's a love song, really. But it also has a lot to do with just internally feeling like the the clown, the the, the dopey uh, theatric uh, slapstick character, you know, as I wander through life. And I think the interplay between those two characters in the song is a lot. It has a lot to do with the interplay between myself and my girlfriend, and maybe girlfriends in the past, and you know. But in in the in the end, it's just really probably my favorite love song that I've written. I gotta laugh at myself today Cause everyone is laughing at me anyway been trying to 
be someone that I'm not. You see, I'm not King Arthur, and I'm not Lancelot. Oh, I've been a fool for too long to go changing myself now. If you will be my queen, I'll be your clown. The parade is in town, so I put on my belts and my paper golden crown, and I walk downtown. Just to see it from the crowd, just to catch your eye as you walk on by. Well, I've been a fool for too long to go changing myself now. If you will be my queen, I'll be your. If you could see me here, then I would make things clear. If I could show you that I'm not just a simple. When did you enter the world of writing songs? The first song I ever wrote uh, was for my mom for Mother's Day. Hmm. Touche. <laughs> when I was about nine. But the whole reason that I started uh, playing music in the beginning, I was at my uh, grandmother's piano. I used to sit at the piano and, and uh, occupy myself. And what I would do is I would make up stories. The black keys were the bad guys and the white keys were the good guys. They asked me if I wanted to start taking lessons just based on that stuff. So I think I've always, I always think of writing a song as if you're writing uh, a script for a movie or a book or a story. You know, you're intro you introduce the characters in the first verse, you, you build what the story is there. Then you give them a little complexity and you, you kind of bring them through the story. The bridge, uh, in, at, you always come back to a chorus, of course, where everybody can sing along, and that's right. important. Without a good hook, you you don't have a good song. And the bridge, you have your complication. You have, you know, that's where things elevate or wherever they go. Um, and then you kind of resolve the song, or you don't, or you leave questions or whatever. But there's this, there's an arc there that I try to follow. Um, that I I hope people see the story there. 
And I think you can do that with songs where the lyrics are not necessarily, you can't um, necessarily get, follow the arc because they're very poetic, but you can still follow the arc because of the direction you give the music to have that story. Tell me about your daily life these days. What are you up to? Right now, I'm, I'm pretty happy uh, getting up and going to work on songs and and business and the the act of of actually being an artist mm -hmm. and the cool thing and the the way that I look at life and and working life is that I'm always kind of working, but I'm always kind of playing. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in the Bay Area or if I'm on tour or wherever it is, I always have certain things that I want to have. I always want to be able to have some form of exercise that revolves around some water. If it's surfing or swimming or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. that's always got to be a part of the day, right? If I, if I get up and I start working at 8 o'clock in the morning and I'm still working at 2 o'clock in the morning, that doesn't mean that I've worked for that many hours. That mm -hmm. means that at some point in the day, I went surfing, I went and had a long lunch with somebody, I you know watched some ridiculous Netflix movie, but it all happened in that day because you're kind of breathing through your day. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's, a, it's an involving thing. And, and music and, and art is, is not a flash kind of thing where you suddenly have this amazing success, I don't think. It happens for a very minute group. It's more of a marathon. Yeah. And you want to pace yourself by continuing to live a, a happy life as you go through things. You know, Wherever I go um, on tour, I always find a pool. I, you know, people will say things to me like, "Oh, I, you know, I eat bad food when I'm on tour," and I say, oh, I, "Why? I, <laughs> yeah. I eat fantastic." You, you don't know? have to. I, so you are you you play around locally here in California, but then you also do some like European stuff, and where where all during in the course of the world, where do you get off to at, at times? Well, over the course of the last uh, about five years, um, I've. Uh, started to really play a lot in Europe, mostly in uh, uh, the Netherlands, uh, also in Germany and, and the Czech Republic as of the last um, year and a half or so. What albums are in your catalog that you have done over the years? I think I have four full-length albums uh, under Gentry Bronson, uh, an EP uh, that's under Gentry Bronson's, a single I did, um, uh, which was written by Baldwin Lechrode and Leonard Nye, um, I did that. That's actually a Gentry Bronson and Jesse Brewster release. Mm -hmm. We, we co, uh, co did that one. And, uh, there's another duet album I did that's an instrumental album, uh, I did with Dave Hoover, mm -hmm. a Gentry Bronson and Dave Hoover album. And then I had, uh, uh, two full length albums and an EP with a band called The Night Watchmen. So, uh, yeah, and you can, you can get, uh, all those albums, the easiest way is usually just by going to my website, which is uh, gentrybronson.com. And then do you have things like up on iTunes and other mm -hmm. places like that? Great. Okay. Yeah, everything is out there on iTunes, Rhapsody, Pandora. We're about to play Shine, and what can you tell us about this song? Shine is uh, a song that uh, is really a lot about freedom and breaking out of your situation mm -hmm. um which is interesting because beautiful ghost is is mm. similar that way um <laughs> are we feeling a little think, caged i think there might be some <laughs> mm, internal captivity mm. um shine, shine i i you know when i the the core of that song comes from from thinking about um about kids around the world and their situations and kids really don't have a lot of control over their situation. They, they don't have a, they can't control where they're born, right. what country, if it's war torn, wh whatever it is, you know. And I started thinking about that, and then I, I started thinking about some kind of fallen friends of mine, and uh, that that got uh, put in there as well. But it, but it really, in the end, is is about embracing your your inner freedom despite mm -hmm. the odds, you mm -hmm. know. So 
But they won't catch ya They won't see That you're Today's episode was sponsored by our good friends at Good Stuff Guitar Shop. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank our special guest, Gentry Bronson, for coming down and playing some great tunes with us. If you'd like some more information about Gentry, please go to our website and check out the Live From Basics show notes, and we'll have all the information there about how to get a hold of his great tunes. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time. We're out of here.